All right, joining us now, she is the assistant coach at Tennessee, of course, former Vol pitcher, great, who also could say, laying the claim was a teammate of Monica Abbott, but she had her success as a player as well. But obviously off to a great start with the Tennessee this year, one of the top pitching staffs in the country. She leads the staff. Speak of Megan Rhodes-Smith, coach, uh, joining us here on In the Circle. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome back on the show. Obviously, you've had a great season. Uh, how would you describe the season so far today? Um, it's been exciting, and it's it's also been a grind in a good way. And you know, I think that every season we were talking about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. You never hear the champions at the end of the season say it was a breeze, everything happened our way, just. Um, we, we didn't even have to try. We just fell into this. We, we didn't set our sights high at all. And so we're finding that, that every week there's something new to learn, some new obstacle to overcome. And, uh, whether that's ourselves or something, the other team is bringing at us. And so it's been fun to do that with this team because they're up for the challenge and they're, they're constantly wanting more and wanting to learn. No doubt. And you obviously lead, help lead the pitching staff, coach them up. That's been one of the best in the country. Just talk about this group of pitchers uh, that you've helped here, here, because this is all year round. It's been consistent, and it's maybe the deepest that you've had, uh, you know, since you've gotten there. Maybe since even before you've gotten there in a while. Perhaps so. I definitely the deepest that I have experienced, and I think that that's obviously there's a, a an incredible talent level. Where, whether that's from our freshmen up to our super senior, Ashley Rogers. But I, I think what's neat is how well they support one another. And there's not, I remember telling one of our, our freshmen back in the fall, you know, it's a little different now because you're not going to outwork anybody. Uh, you know, if you, if you try to outwork someone, you're going to throw too much because everybody here works hard. They all want it. And they're all trying to, uh, perfect their craft and so I think that's a pretty neat culture to have on a pitching staff um, not only of the way that they are striving for excellence but the way they support one another um, and, and I think they all bring such different looks and I know that that's been really um, I think that's been a really huge feather in our cap that it, you can't prepare for one certain style with our staff and uh, so they can support each other that way and they're, they're not having to one person carry the majority of the load. They're getting to share that. And that's a physical and mental break for all of them to know that if I don't get it done, the next girl can come in and she's got my back so they can go out and play with a lot of freedom. Is that something, how long have, you know, did you establish that in the fall to say, Hey, you're all going to get opportunities. You're all going to have a certain role. Talk, talk me through that process as you, you know, you kind of learn the pitchers, what they can do, but then all kind of establish that, that, hey, this is, we're all going to have a role on this team and contribute. Yeah, I think early in the fall, we, we just kind of established, hey, we're going to strive to be the best in the nation. And we kind of laid some numbers out and really never talked about numbers again, but I just said, hey, this is what this looks like. We're going to, we're going to shoot for it. And there's nothing wrong with shooting for excellence. And then seeing where you fall, but you know, you definitely don't want to shoot for less than that. Um, and so I think we laid that out and then very quickly said, Hey, each of you is different. We need to understand that and celebrate that and really learn how you guys will play off of each other because there's, there may be people who don't follow one another well, or there may be a really great combo here that we need to explore and, you know, you just need to stay focused on what you're doing and compete with each other in a healthy way. Um, but we really didn't establish roles. Uh, I don't really feel like that came out until we started playing because, you know, you can have an idea going into the season. This is how I think it's going to go. But until you really get out there and compete, you don't necessarily have an idea of, you know, who's going to who's going to be taking seven innings here, who's going to be effective two times through and then we need to switch it up. Um, and so I think that a little of it was, let's just get out there and compete and see, see what needs to happen. And we're just, we're always ready. Uh, I think we saw that in game two of Texas A&M this weekend, getting to bring in Nicholas Simpson and just, she had a completely different look, Charlie Orsini getting an inning there too. Um, 
and just them being ready when their number was called and going out and doing a job. Ashley, obviously, everybody knows what she's capable of uh, when she's healthy. What's it been like working with her? And if you've, what have you seen from her this year uh, that maybe it, it, it's different? Do you sense maybe that, hey, this is my last go around here? Or, or what, what have you seen from Ashley? Obviously, she was taking her game to even a different level uh, yeah. than, than previous years. Ashley, Ashley has always been special. So um, it, she has a level of determination that I really think is only rivaled by Monica in, in my experience. Um, so I, I think that Ashley, I don't, I don't think that she's coming out and saying, this is my last year. It has to be the best. I think she just comes out and says, I have unfinished business. I think there's things that she is, she has her heart set on and she's out here to do it. And um, so she's a great leader. She is the perfect mama bear for the rest of the pitching staff. Um, they, they all would say they've learned a lot from her. And so I think that that's not only in what she says to them verbally, but also in how she competes. That she just competes a little differently. And she has another gear when she is challenged. She has another gear that she can turn on. And it, it's incredible to watch when she does that. Um, but if you, if you ask what I think is really different, I think she's just wiser. She knows how to be smart about her body. She knows how to communicate with us and say, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm needing. And at the same time, she's again, getting to share the load. And I think that's been, that's been a real gift for her. And, you know, she said the other day, she's having the time of her life that she's having so much fun with this team and this staff and, um, you know, so on, on my part, I'm just happy for her that she's getting to have this last go around and we, what we call her grandma year. She's, she's special. And so the, the sport deserves to get to see Ashley for one more, one more season. How does she lead this staff? Is she a vocal leader? Does she lead by example with the, the other pitchers? All of it. She, she is very much in tune. There's never a mo moment in practice when she's not in tune with what's going on. She's watching them on defense. She's watching what the team is doing. Um, she's paying attention in bullpens. If something needs to be said, it, I feel like I have an extension of myself with her. If I'm turning around looking at somebody, she sees somebody doing their warm up off. She's she's going to catch them on it. And so I think she has a very high standard of excellence for herself, and she's not afraid to share that with others. Of course, you got a new face in Carlin Pickens, which has made a, a lot of uh, uh, noise. I'll never forget, I believe the first time I saw her mm -hmm. was in Tampa. I think you, just, you all threw her against Clemson, yes. if I recall, which was yes. a marquee game, which got picked <laughs> up, was on stream. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's a, I think some people maybe was caught off guard. And then they saw her throwing, like, oh, that's why they threw her, uh, shutting <laughs> out Clemson. Good. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, was that something, I mean, the year she's having, is that what you all expected? Did she surprise you? Is she ahead of schedule? I know you had, there was high expectations with her coming in, but has he even surprised you a little bit of how the high level that she's pitched? Um, I would say it's not surprising. It's just you never know with a freshman what, what's going to happen when the lights turn on. You know what they're capable of, um, and you hope that they reach that. But then when the lights come on, it's just different. Um you know, they, they've never been in stadiums like this. They've never um, had hostile crowds. They've, if they have, it's been at a high school level or on a smaller scale. And so, you know, what does that do to them? And I think if, I've been really impressed with uh, her competitiveness. She, she wants to win and she wants to be out there for her team. And um, again, I think she's similar to Ashley in that she has an extra level that, um, the, the competition brings out in her. And so that was fun because you don't quite see that all the time in practice to get to see her pull it out or to see the game pull it out of her when she competes is really fun. Um, and then of course, she's nowhere near peaking. We're not even close to her ceiling. So I think where, where could she go from here is just incredible to think about. How much, how big was that Clemson game for her? Was that like a, a moment there that I would assume it's got to give her confidence moving forward that, hey, you just shut down a great team like Clemson like that. Uh, I know she was throwing well before that, but, mm -hmm. at, you know, just to do that in a marquee game like that, that was a top 10 game. Everybody eyeballs were watching that game. 
to see what happened, and, and it was she stood out. Is that a game that could be a standout moment there that carries her through this year and the rest of her career from her confidence standpoint? Um, I don't know that it would carry her. I think she that's what she came here to do. Um, and so to, to have that opportunity, and I definitely think it gave her confidence, you know, uh, you step out and you do exactly what you intended to do. I, I think there's, it just, it sets you off on a trajectory um, and kind of creates a, a an upward spiral for yourself. So um, yeah, I, I definitely think it gave her confidence, but in no way do I think she was surprised. I think that's exactly what she wanted from herself. It sounds to me that even though she's a freshman, she's she she acts more like a veteran. It sounds like to me, uh, in some ways. And you know, it's funny because I've got Ashley, who's you know, again, we joke with her about being the grandma. She's so mature. You know, by all rights, she should be out in the working world, and we still get to be with her. And then I've got a couple of goofy freshmen. So you know, on the field, you see this one persona, and then when you really know them off the field, like you can still feel that there's that that freshman fun about her and that the newness is still there. Everything she experiences is it's fun for her. And you get to see it through her eyes of it being the first time that she's getting to do each, each milestone. Of course, a lot of attention, Peyton Gottschalk coming over uh, for Bowling Green. Ironically, I was uh, her former coach, Sarah Willis was in Orlando playing head coach now at Bradley yes. was playing in the Orlando tournament when you were in Tampa and I you know, crossed paths with her, and I asked her, are you surprised how well Peyton's doing at Tennessee? She's like, nope, not one bit. Uh, <laughs> I knew she'd be a good fit there. In there, Just talk about how she's fit in there and transition. She Her transition has been great. Um, Peyton has fire, and she is very funny. Um, and so uh, one of our girls, uh, I think it was our after our third tournament down in Tampa, um, she, she looked at Peyton and was like, I just love your mental game. Like she, Peyton just is in the circle, having a good time. Um, she's, she knows what, what state of mind is going to produce the best of herself. And she just puts herself in that place and, and goes to work. Um, and so her stuff is fun. Her, her personality is fun. And I think her teammates really love playing behind her as a competitor. I'm trying to remember the last time a Tennessee staff had six pitchers start a game in a season. I mean, that's, I don't know if that, I mean, that doesn't happen often there. Certainly the game is different now than it was when even you played uh, there. Tell me about handling a pitching staff. Mm -hmm. Where did you, what, what have you learned about handling a pitching staff? Uh, your style as far as handling a pitching staff. Uh, what have I learned? I would say, you know, I think the biggest thing to know is that everybody wants the ball. Nobody is here because they just want to hang out. And so I think that's a blessing. And it also creates a challenge because there's only so many innings. And we've been, again, blessed that some people have done really well. They haven't needed relief. And that's one of the things that we've constantly communicated to the staff is you never know when your number is going to be called. Um, and there's times when if someone doesn't need relief, they don't need it. And that's, that can be difficult. Uh, if you were ready, you were ready to go. You wanted to be in the game. Um, but, you know, don't let that deter you. Don't let that stop you from staying ready and knowing that your moment is coming. So I think that uh, what I would, what I have learned is that communication is really key. And I think honesty is really key and making sure that people know, um, this is, this is what we see. This is the role. Hey, this is what you're doing today. Um, but then also making sure they understand that at any given moment, the game can shift. You may have been uh, doing a workout today and suddenly you're in relief and you have to have showed up to the field ready to go, no matter what happens. Um, and, and not say, well, I wasn't ready. I, you know, you told me this and that's not what happened. That's, that's just not the game. Sometimes the game can change in a second. And we've got to do whatever it takes to, to try to win that game. Um, but when it comes to style, I think to me, it's making sure that um, we all know what's expected. We're all working hard. And um, like I said, that at any moment, we don't know what's going to happen. And so we have to operate under that principle and 
you know, maybe I get my number called once a weekend, once, um, once every couple of weeks, or maybe it's almost every day that I'm preparing to do something in the game and we have to be there to support each other and we have to always be locked in. And that's harder when you're not in the game, but we have to also be, be ready for that. Um, but I think it also, the people that you have around you is what really matters. And I have six really amazing humans who they're good people and they're hard workers and they want the best for each other. They want the best for the team. And ultimately I think that makes that communication piece so much easier because they are willing to be unselfish and they're willing to be team first. You're in your third season there, which I don't know. It feels like time's flown. Like I remember yeah. we had John, when you just got hired. Uh, <laughs> what have you learned during your time there? that you didn't know when you got, when you first got back, you returned obviously as a, on the staff. Um, I, I, it's not that I didn't know it, but experiencing it is so different. Um, the grind of the SEC and how different that is um, than, than many conferences because you don't, there's no such thing as a weekend off. And, you know, you could, you could also say that from the standpoint of the expectations. Um, you can't ever just show up because everybody's gunning for you. And I think that's something, you know, you, you go in knowing that at Tennessee, there's a target on your back, but the feel of that and the daily preparation of that and making sure your athletes are ready um, and, and not taking that to mean pressure, but rather we're always on our game and we have to learn how to be that type of competitor. Uh, I think that was probably maybe the biggest difference or the thing that, um, I knew, but in an application was um, a bigger challenge than I realized. The, the competition is just incredible. What's it been like working with Chris Malvo, who's now in his second season? He runs the offense. And of course, Karen, obviously running the show there. What's that been like? It's great. Um, our our group text um, with our coaching staff, we call it the dream team because we all just love working together and um it really is in that sense, it is a dream because everybody from Chris to Kate to Karen, everybody really cares. And they show up every day wanting Tennessee to be the best. And um, so we, we take whatever piece that we're working on that day and run with it. But um, everybody's funny. They have a fun sense of humor. Um, and we all bring different things, too. And so we've tried to really explore that and and understand each other as a staff because there is that growing period uh, you know, it's not just the team that has to get to know each other. It's us as well and understand how each of us ticks and how we need to communicate. And then also making sure we're always doing what's best for the team. Obviously, uh, Chris got a good gig with the offense. There's a, they're yeah. rolling there. Kiki Malloy, a national player of the year candidate, having an incredible year. Just talking about the offense too. You all you compliment your pitching staff, but your offense has a lot of speed, got mm -hmm. power with people like Malloy and Gibson among others, pretty balanced there to talk about what, uh, about your offense this season. You know, I think the offense and the pitching staff, like they're the greatest gifts that each other could give to each other because, um, you know, nothing gives you more confidence as a, as a pitcher than to know, Hey, the defense behind me is great. Or I know my hitters are going to score runs. That's what they do. Um, and Hey, if they have a rough game, I got their back or vice versa. Uh, the offense knows, Hey, the pitching staff, they're locked down. We're just going to go out and grind for them. Um, you know, they, they've got this, we can relax and do our job. And so I think that the interplay there has been really neat to watch, but um, yeah, I think Chris, I, I love his style. I love the way that our girls, just the way that they compete, the way that they um, lock in. And, you know, like I said before, I think Every, everything is a learning opportunity. So it's not that everything goes smoothly all the time, but I think it's more that they always dive in to whatever's happening. If it's going great, how can we be even better? If we hit a rough patch, okay, what's going on? How can we get back to exactly where we want to be? What, what are we missing here? Um, and so it's just that constant communication, that constant drive. I, I love watching them work because they are intense. Um, and it's a very, it's a very fun, intense, there, there's a lot of fun being had, but it's, it's intense and it's driven. Um, they're looking to be their very best. Um, 
There was another question in there I missed. Well, just and the balance of the Kiki in the speed. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> well, I was actually looking at our stats the other day, and I'm sure that you know I know how jinxes work, but you know, we haven't really hit into many double plays. And I think that's a testament to the speed on the team, um, just through the lineup, because it's not that we haven't hit ground balls at times, but um, I think that there's enough speed that we're not, we're not giving up two easy outs in a row. Um, but, you know, Kiki, you brought up Kiki. She is, she's in that level with Monica and with Ashley, with what she brings and how she elevates the game of the people around her just by what she brings, her intensity and her leadership, the way she communicates. Um, she can put a team on her back when she needs to. And yeah, she's, she's fun to watch. She's fun to be around and, and quite inspiring, honestly, like the, the athleticism there is just incredible. This Tennessee team got off to the best start in program history. When you heard that, were you surprised? You're like, wait, like that's the best that's the, was. right like aren't you because a lot of people are like wait a minute like oh consider I, I mean all the great teams wow that's the best start this ever had i don't know yeah. if that got i don't know if that's something that was discussed to the team and what they've accomplished and what that meant or no. you as who's played there you probably had some thoughts there what when you first were told you found out hey this is the best start in program history no vols teams had a better start what went through your mind you know, actually, my first thought, it's funny you said that, because I thought, better than the 07 team? That's right. <laughs> right um, you know, that's that's great. I love it. And um, I, I don't think, we didn't set out to start off better than any other team. It's just, we took one game at a time and, and played hard. And then kind of looked up all of a sudden, we're like, hey, we're doing pretty good. Let's keep going. Um, so, and it, that sounds like we you know, didn't have high standards. It's not that we just, uh, we didn't set out with a result in mind in that sense. We just wanted to be the best that we could be every game and go one game at a time. And then I think that's the way that it's supposed to work. You, you don't set out to say, we're going to um, go undefeated for the next 20 games and then focus on that. You, you stay focused on the process and that's what they have done so well. Uh, and what we continue to come back to is being focused on the little things that matter. Um, but yeah, I think that's neat to be a part of because I remember, gosh, in 07, I felt like we never lost, right. um, but it's been a while now. So I, I probably just don't have as, as good of a memory as maybe I think I do. Um, but yeah, that, that was a good team. And so to be in the same conversation with, with some of those teams, I think is pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Trip. Maybe it was the other pitcher that lost a game or two, not you. Yeah, right. So clearly, clearly. <laughs> Uh, other team plus you had other great teams the Madison you know 2013 team I mean, it was pretty impressive yeah. there you mentioned earlier about Ashley Rogers and maybe you know some unfinished business if you will do you feel the returners had that mentality coming into the fall coming into the season of some unfinished business uh, to accomplish considering how last season ended the disappointment obviously running into you know Oregon State in the regionals the what if Oregon State obviously got to the World Series is that does that play a role in the unfinished business motivation is that even brought up at all or is that like in the past and this is just a new de a new focus here locked in on the present and the future yeah I mean there's a lot of emotions when you lose out and you don't expect to but I it is not something that we continue to talk about um, it's more of just we know what we're capable of and that's what we're going for um, you know and and then that conversation quickly turns to the how and then the how turns back to the process and we stay there um, and we, I think this team very much understands that if they get results oriented, it's not going to work. And that the, the key is we've got to build our mentality and build our processes and our habits. Um, it's a constant building, building process to May and into June. So if we, if we stay in that space, then we're where we want to be. If we come off of that and get results focused, then you know, that's when we're going to find that we're not, we're not clicking the way that we know we can. Um, but yes, I think very motivated um, by, by what they know they can do and where they want to be. What has, it, well, how is coach weekly different now as you've worked with her now going on the third season compared to when you played for her? Oh man. Um, you know, I think that she had a little bit of like, um, 
a learning curve when, when Ralph retired, because it was just different. And she talked about that some that, you know, Hey guys, I got to kind of figure out what this looks like for me to not do it with Ralph. Um, and so I, there were times where maybe we tried something one way and then she tried it a different way. And, um, I really see her settling into that. I think she's an incredible leader. Um, and I think the way that she's really dived into the, I want to say like the mental game, the mindset the just the off the field, um, she, she recognizes how important that is in, in a head coach and, she, I mean, she's got X's and O's. She could do that in her sleep. Um, and so knowing that um, she's coaching women and how much communication and trust and um, that that relationship together, how much that matters, I think she's really striking a, a very impressive balance between, um, I, I call it truth and grace, you know, telling the truth, but also being loving and um supporting the people that you're around and letting them know, Hey, I'm here for you. So, um, I don't know that I can speak to how she's different, but it's really more just, um, it's different because now she's the head coach and before it was Karen and Ralph. Um, and so there was always the interplay of those two. And now it's, um, you know, it's what Karen is doing. So, um, it, it's, it's our job as assistants to play off of that and, and be what we need to be for her. I, when I spoke to her about you coming on board, she said the big thing excited about was not only what you can bring as a coach, but honestly the fact that you've played there, that you know what it, the standard of being a Tennessee Vol and being a pitcher at mm -hmm. Tennessee, that you would bring that to the players. That has shown that with the numbers. The numbers have improved drastically since your arrival. I, you know, I remember I talked to Erin Edmondson last summer. And she talked about that. Working with you, she could tell what it meant to be a Tennessee vault. What does that mean when people bring that up about you, that you know what it's what it means to be a Tennessee volunteer pitcher, being a Tennessee vault? Uh, I don't know if we have time to talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the things that I remember as a player that stood out to me most, um, you know, that we can cover the standard of excellence. We can cover – the fact that you know you're always striving to be your best we're not making excuses but it really had so much more to do with what it was like to be here and to be part of this culture and um what that how that grew you as a woman and as a person uh whether it was in how you carried yourself with confidence how you um, carry yourself with determination but also in the way that you respect yourself and the way you respect others and uh, that they should feel that from you. Um, you know, I was here when, when Pat Summit was here and when Joan Cronin was here. And I, I just still remember how much those two women permeated the entire program. And then I think Ralph and Karen talked all the time about um, the ideals that they upheld and, and who they were. And so I think that being shaped by that culture and just the pride that you have in who you are and being a lady ball and representing this great university, you can't, it, it's really hard to explain because you have to feel it. But when people are here, they feel it. They feel how much it matters and how much, you know, in that sense, pride is not a bad word. It's something that you are, um, you want to uphold. And I would say Ashley is one of those people who feels it the most. Um, she's talked about it. She brings it up. Um, you know, you have to have a pride in who you are and, um, and what this means and what you're about. And so, yeah, I think that, I think it's neat to get to come back and try to instill that in the next generation of Lady Vols, because it made, it made me the woman in person that I am today. And, you know, I'm watching that happen in them as well. You know, Kiki Malloy just was, honored with a torchbearer award. She's the first softball player, which is incredible. If you consider, we've had some really amazing people come through here, um, it, really amazing athletes and amazing academic performers. And so for Kiki to be the first, it, it tells you just how stringent that process is, but you couldn't have picked a better person than Kiki Malloy. Um, and so I, I think that watching her she's just grown in every single way since being here and her her mom spoke to that she came in for that um the presentation of the award and i thought to myself that's what this program does 
is the Lady of All program is meant to create strong, capable women who are ready to do their best in the world and to get out there and change the world. That's incredible. That's a great story there. What's the most common question that the players have asked you in your three, <laughs> three, three seasons, whether it be about either pitching or maybe about you as a player or just being a lady vault? What, what's the most common question you constantly have gotten? I don't know that I get a common question because honestly, what we talk about runs the gamut. Um, so I wish that I triggered on something when you asked that, but they, they ask everything. So I think that that, that makes me proud because they feel open to ask about anything. Um, so whether it's, you know, they'll ask a little bit about my career, but you know, it's more about, Hey, what, what can I do coach? Or, you know, they'll ask something about my kids or being a mom or my, my major, you know, what, what did you actually study? So we talk about lots of stuff. All right. So it's pretty valid. All right. I'll ask you yeah. this since I watched you play. What's one thing now that you've been there on this side as a coach mm -hmm. with the program, what's one thing that you now have know from this side, being a coach, you wish you knew 15 years ago when you were a player. Ooh. I think I gave hitters too much credit um, as a player. So I think that, I think if I had had a better understanding of how hard their job is, I would have been even more confident at executing what I was doing. Um, and, and an even better understanding, um, you know, things that people didn't talk about, you know, effective velocity and setting up hitters, like we were more attacking weaknesses uh, back then. And so I think that there's just some conversations and some information that is more common knowledge now that I wish had been a part of what I did back then. Because uh, I think I would have been better. You wish you had some of the information, the data that yeah. you have, right? Like some of the advanced numbers that you have, yeah. some of the video. Because you didn't have all that. Oh. Like, I, I, like there's a part of me that wonders, like, how did you all get by like 15 years ago? <laughs> right? We like, played. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, like, just figured it out on the fly, right? That, yeah. That's kind of that's pretty wild. Uh, plus, you also help the have teammates like Monica Abbott. That it, it really it doesn't hurt. <laughs> right, it doesn't hurt. Now I have to ask you about Monica, obviously, because the big news this year was she announced her retirement. Yes. Were you surprised when she announced it, or no. told even you were not surprised? No. Why? Um, I just I think Monica has done so much, and yeah, I, I think there there reaches a point when. Um, you know, you, you kind of think, well, what's next? And so that's just, that was my personal thought was, you know, I bet she's getting close. And so when she said, Hey, I'm ready. It's like, I get that. I totally get that. Um, gosh, she's had such an incredible career and it's been so fun to watch her that, you know, I think it'll be just as fun to watch her, you know, f figure out what's next for herself. And because there could be so many things that are next. But, you know, I think, I hope she's really basking in the, just how much people are celebrating her in her retirement because she did some incredible things for the game. What popped into your head once she made it public there? And because and, I'm sure people reached out to you for your thoughts on that. But what was, you know, you probably knew it was coming uh, behind the scenes probably. But once it came out public, what went through your mind? Just how proud I was. Um, it's not well, everything she did is not common. You know, it's not just this this normal trajectory that people take. And so she you knew I got the privilege of being in the bullpen with her every day for three years. And so just to watch how she went about her business, um, there was just no question that if she stayed healthy, she was going to have an incredible career in whatever capacity was available. You know, at, at that point, we didn't. It's like, what does that even look like? But for her to keep going and be part of two Olympics and to be in the shape that she is uh, at this age and to still have the stuff that she does, it's just, it's really incredible. Um, so I think what popped in my head was, I'm just so proud of her because she did it. She did, like she got everything out of herself. She did everything she was capable of doing and she gets to walk away on her terms. And I know she stays involved with the program. She comes by, talks to the team mm -hmm. uh, every so often. That's what I've heard. What What is that like when she's around the program, when she's around now the current players? What is that like? What do you see from your players when she's talking to them and they like, oh, there's Monica Abbott? Yeah. 
Um, you know, actually what makes me really happy is that they still have the little stars in their eyes when they look at her. Um, like they know who she is and what a big deal it is that this person is giving me advice or this person is telling me something about their uh, experience. Um, because, you know, you could, you could walk up to a little girl now and they may not exactly know who she is because they didn't get to see her play in the same capacity. They, they would know who Ashley Rogers is. Um, so I, I'm really happy that, you know, even our freshmen who have come in, they know exactly who Monica Abbott is and they should, you know, knowing the history of our game is, is a big deal. So we need to know this woman, especially who was so instrumental in Tennessee softball history. Um, you know, I, I can tell how much it means to them when they see her, when they hear from her, um, and she'll, she'll be here in a couple of weeks for us to celebrate her retirement. Um, and so I, I know the freshmen are already getting kind of excited about it. I haven't talked to anybody else, but they're like, Oh, I can't wait for Monica to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, I feel like it's part of like the recruit. Hey, do I get to meet Monica? I mean, that's gotta be part right. Of the Where's pitch, Monica? Right. <laughs> right. Like I, that's, that's kind of the deal. What's that like for you to be around her when she is like, obviously you spent so much time together as players, your friends, but yeah. obviously, you know, she's been doing her thing. You're doing her thing. So you don't get to hang out. Right. right. So when she is around, what's that like for you? There's some people in the world that, you know, you just kind of pick up where you left off. And we were just the goofiest little friends, um, it, you know, because as pitchers, you know, you have your workout and then everybody hates on you because you don't have anything else to do the rest of practice. So we would just spend practice like making up cheers or trying to keep it light or just really having a good time when appropriate. Um, and so you know, I think we just kind of pick right back up there. We, you know, we catch up on each other's lives, but it's, there's that, that love that's always there, that appreciation. And, um, you know, I think we're just proud of each other too. Um, because we, we went through a lot together and, um, uh, you know, you don't, you don't lose that bond when, when you're not around each other, it's just location. Well, when you came back, she was like your biggest supporter. She said, this was great for the program. She was super excited. What did that mean to you that she had your back publicly, right? Not that you needed it, not that you needed it, but I mean, she is, she's the goat of the program. She is. And she approves and says, this is the right person. I'm excited about this. That yeah. had to mean a lot. I mean, that's just what she did while we were here at Tennessee. She had my back, I had hers. Uh, that's that's how it should be. So again, I don't think that those bonds don't change just because you're old and don't get to wear the uniform anymore. Um, but yeah, it means a lot. And I think good friends are hard to come by and Monica's one of my best friends. So, um, I, yeah, you want your friends to love you and support you. And, but it was no shock that she did. That's just the type of person she is. You don't challenge her to like throw, Hey, can you throw some in the bullpen there for us there? Or, and, and, and cause then she might <laughs> well, say, well, you better throw some in the bullpen, right? Like, oh, I can listen. Get Listen, I don't have it anymore. If we're being honest, she does. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> what I'm saying, that's, you know, usually as a pitching coach, you know, you bring in a pitcher, hey, you know, we can throw no, I don't think you want to get, go there with Monica there. That no, could get her no. Juices well, going. she, I mean, she just got done. I mean, she's been on top of her craft for so long. But, you know, it was really neat. Um, this might have been not this past fall, but the, the fall before she came in town to throw. Um, Marty McGee was, he challenged her um oh yeah to strike him out so that was yeah. fun but um so ash was warming up next to her in the bullpen and i was like oh my goodness like that i'm having a moment they're probably fine but i'm like these these two i just love seeing them next to each other um and so it was that was fun for me to see i would imagine that had to be a good i mean here's your teammate one of the greats of all time with one of your pitchers that you coach that that's kind of a full circle moment for you Absolutely. Well, and you know, Ashley herself, she's done so much for our program. Yeah. Um, you know, to see those two together, it was just like a lot of excellence standing right there together. <laughs> well, you were pretty good yourself. What did you learn from Monica? You mentioned being in those bullpens mm -hmm. with her as a player that you've applied in a way to your coaching. Cause I'm sure you learned, picked up on stuff that you now teach your players now. Yes. Uh, Monica, um, you know, I've used the word determined. I think that that is definitely the case. There, there was nobody more determined. If she needed to get something done, it was going to get done. Um, and I think, I think that's a mindset. Um, 
obviously she had a lot of talent, but you can't look in our bullpen and say there's not talent here. So um, I think it's it's knowing how to say all you have to do is, is decide that this is how it's going to be and then not take no for an answer. Um, I saw that with her. She she was just relentless. She never gave in um, in the hard moments. She would just get back up and keep going. Um you know, and you get to see that and, and walk with someone while they do it. Um, but I think also to know, like, she's one of the greatest that we've ever seen. And so for her to go through the exact same things that, that my players go through at times, it's like, Hey guys, your struggle is not, it's not yours alone. Everybody has gone through this. Even Monica Abbott had times when she had to go figure it out, um, or to, to do things a little differently or to pick herself back up after a loss. So if, if even Monica went through it, you know, there, there's nothing wrong. Like just, just keep going. Let's stay the course. You're, you're good. You're going to be good. You have a favorite Monica Abbott game or a moment. Oh, favorite man. I don't, I literally just had a flashback to about 10 different games. Um, <laughs> I, I think my favorite games, my favorite ones were the times when somebody got to her on one day and then she regrouped and the next day they didn't touch her. Um, and I just think, I think that shows so much grit. I think it shows so much mental toughness to not go back out there and be scared, but to say, I'm going to take my game to the next level and you see what you're going to do with it. Um, and so I watched her do that several times, not too often. Cause it wasn't that often that someone got to her, but it happened. And it, I, I love when people bring out the next level of themselves. And so those are my favorite moments. What do you think she will do? Cause that's the thing we only have seen her in the public eye is the yeah. so, is softball playing softball her entire life. I mean, yeah. I think nobody would question if she still wanted to play. I think nobody would say, yeah, yeah, she could still play. Yeah. Do you think she's somebody that will stay involved in the game? Like others, like Kat Osterman got into coaching. She's currently mm -hmm. doing broadcasting, for example. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Finch, I know, is still around and, and coaching, you know, with her kids, and they're playing, you know, youth league softball and stuff. Do you think she'll be involved still in the game, or do you think she's the type that needs to step away from the game because it's going to be hard for her to let it go as far as being on the field? Yeah. Well, ultimately, she'll do whatever she wants because that's just Monica. She'll she'll do it. Whatever she does, she'll do well. Um, I would imagine that she would stay around the game because she's, you know, she may not be playing it, but she's got a lot to give. There's so much in that head. There's so much that she's experienced so much. She knows um, what that looks like. I have no idea. And I think she's probably going to have a great time just kind of figuring that out. Um, but yeah, whatever, whatever it is, she'll be great at it. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of intrigued by her there. I'm assuming you too, you all invite her. Obviously you'll be, you mentioned she'll be back in a few weeks, you know, you could just get her a you know season ticket too. You know, just kind of just come out together. I know she's living out west, maybe a little travel, but you know, I'm sure the invite's there, right? Just feel free exactly. to hang out here. Exactly. When, whenever you want to be here, please get here. We want to see you. <laughs> we spoke though when we had you on last time about your playing career and following her and how the challenges that came with that with the expectations. Right. Is it does it seem like it's blown by that? I just realized 15 years ago was your last year. I watched you play, pitch. So I feel so old. old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was the point I was getting to. What I think <laughs> has it seemed like it's blown by? Is it like what what does that mean to you that 15 years ago you were wearing those same colors, but you yeah. were in the circle, and now 15 years later, you're coaching vault pitchers? Uh I mean it means the world. It means the world to be here. Um, so no, that's not lost on me. But when it comes to thinking like, man, was that 15 years ago? Sometimes it feels longer <laughs> because there's just stuff I don't remember anymore. Things that you thought, oh, I'll never forget about that. I'll never forget what that feels like. Um, you know, and, and my dad or someone else will be like, remember this game? And I'm like, what are you talking about? We never played them, you know, and I just, <laughs> just moved on in life and I just forget stuff. But, um, no, I think, I think the important thing is, um, just exactly what we talked about earlier, what it means to be a lady ball. It means just as much to be back and get to give back to the program um, and to be a part of this. And so I, you know, I'm very blessed to get to do that and be around the people that I'm around. And honestly, the program is still shaping me today. And so that's, that's neat. Uh, not a lot of people get to say that uh, they did it twice. So I'm very lucky. 
compare the thrill of winning as a player, as a Lady Vol player versus winning as a Lady Vol coach. Same, different? It's different. Um, I don't, I don't want to say better or worse. It's just different. It's different when you're the one out there and, and you're with your girls and Hey, we're the, we're the ones who fought for this. Um, but as a coach, it's, it's like, you feel more pride. Like you're so proud of them. You're so excited, um, to, to, for them to get to experience that same feeling. Um, so both are really amazing emotions, but it's just different. Does your family, uh, is, is stressed out when you're coaching compared to when you were a player or they were more stressed out when you were a player? How, what is the sense you've gotten from your family as a, when you were a player versus being a coach? Do they stress out equally? Do they have that? Eh, no, she, cause I'm not, I've, 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 I've actually asked other family members, mm -hmm. like for example, Sydney Ball Malone is a head coach at UCF. I asked her mom, are you more stressed out when you watch your coach than when she was a player? She's like, no, uh, for some reason, I just feel like she's more, she's got it under control as a coach, whereas a player, I was always nervous. Yeah. How's your family? When, how have they handled that? I, I think they would probably say the same as Cindy's mother. Um, I mean, my, my dad, he's not pacing anymore. So I feel like that's a good sign. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, they're definitely more relaxed. I would say just having a good time, but you know, my husband, he watched me my senior year. Um, so I think, and, and then obviously we've been together through my whole coaching career. So it's, he's just used to watching me coach. So I think it's, it's different. Um, but you know, he's also taking care of our two girls in the stands. So there's things that he misses anyway. <laughs> yeah. The kid, I have a feeling, yeah, the kids kind of distract him from watching everything going on. Right. Like you might tell him, Hey, did yeah. you see that? I'm like, no, actually I was busy running, making sure our kids were staying in one piece. <laughs> There, there was a key moment in the game recently. I was like, did you see that? Can you believe that? And he's like, no, I had to go inside the blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, you missed it. <laughs> yeah, I, w I was curious, post-game, how much of the conversation, is, does he bring up the game? Does the game get come up first? Or do you bring up, hey, what are the kids doing? What, what comes up first in a post-game? It depends on who's talking first. So okay. if it's me, I'm like, how are the girls? Um, and if it's, if it's him, he's like, okay, we need to cover this, this, and that. Like he loves the game. It's, it's so, so much fun. Like the family is totally in my oldest daughter. Um, she like studies the game. She probably knows all their stats. I don't know their stats, but you know, she's like, oh, so-and-so has this many home runs. I'm like, how do you even know that? You know, but she, cause she just loves it. She soaks it in. She's, I was trying to film her last night without her realizing it because she was trying to do the drills that Chris teaches the girls and she was mirroring it pretty well. I mean, it's, it's not exact. Um, Cause it's a very, it's a very specific swing, but you know, she gets to watch some of the best do what they do all the time. And I think that's so cool. That's She's hooked. She's hooked. She loves it. What's she asked you any common, what's the most popular question she'll ask you about softball. Hmm. She um, doesn't think she needs to ask me anything. So I think, Oh, <laughs> It's one of those. I got you. There yeah, you, go. you know, I'm still her parent, so I don't know anything. <laughs> if she does pursue softball, playing, or any sport, how much uh, will you be Coach Road Smith to her? Or are you going to try to, you know, close that and just be a mom and not coach her? What's your – because I've seen very – some like to be, go ahead, hey, I'm a coach. I can help her out, be bond that way. Some don't want to coach them. Some just say, you know what, I'd just rather be the parent. And I'll let somebody else coach her. What have you thought about that? Um, I, initially, I thought I just want to be mom. Um, but then, as we kind of got into it, it was like ah, there's some stuff that I know that I want to give to her. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so that that's hard. I think we're having to learn that balance. But ultimately, I'll kind of let her just lead that and see where does she need me to be, and if it's hey, I need to, I do need to back off and be her mom. That's totally fine with me. I can whisper the message to somebody else. Um, you know, and, or, or vice versa. If it's like, no, mom, I, I really need this from you, then I'll give that to her as well. So I think it's ultimately the relationship is the most important thing. So it's, I'll, I'll let her kind of lead how that needs to look. Obviously, there's been uh, good stuff going on in the athletic department over there with football mm -hmm. having a great season, getting to the Orange Bowl, winning the Orange Bowl. Josh Heupel doing a great job who acknowledged softball and the great success you yeah. all been having uh, on his, I think, spring practice, one of his first post uh, media pressers. 
uh, during the spring there. Women's basketball, Coach Harper, another lady Vol, yeah. uh, doing her thing, making a nice run in the postseason. Uh, I texted you from our, um, the Amway Center where Rick Barnes in Tennessee got to the Sweet 16 despite yes. the injuries they had to deal with. What's it like in that department? Baseball, obviously, with the success they've had the last couple mm -hmm. of years. What is that like right now in that department? It's what I remember from being a player. Um, you know, everybody was good when I was here playing. And so you just have this sense of like, you're surrounded by excellence. Like that's what we do here. Um, and then I know that, that there were some changes uh, after I graduated and, and that, that went a little topsy turvy for a few years, but so it's really meaningful to get to be a part of it when I feel like we are, uh, we are back to what, what it was like previously, where everybody's competing, everybody's in the conversation. Um, you know, we've got, I believe it's swimming and diving. They're just on fire. Um, I think everything is good. And that's what we want to be in everything school, um, not just the, the top sports or the revenue sports, but rather that everything matters here and that our athletes feel that it's not just whatever's best for football, but it's how can we serve all of you? Yeah, I think that's been worked on. That doesn't surprise me, obviously, with Danny White uh, being in charge of that, because that's kind of been his motto everywhere he's been uh, yes. about all the sports, too. Uh, a big supporter on that. All right, last thing before we let you go. Obviously, you got the rest of the season to go here. What's some of the keys and things you're looking forward to uh, finding out about this team moving forward the rest of the way? I, I would definitely say we've, we've still got plenty of challenges up ahead. You know, we've got Baylor and Mercer coming in this weekend. Um, the following week, we're in Virginia Tech. We're going to Kentucky. So whether it's the travel or whether it's the opponents uh, or both, um, I, think, I think if we can just stay locked in and uh, we have to stay true to who we are and what brought us to this point, which is that those small focus uh, staying on the process, staying on the little things, communicating really well. Um, that I think it's just a matter of staying the course and not getting distracted by the noise. Um, noise happens no matter who you are. And um, so it's, it's a challenge for this generation because there's a lot of noise everywhere all the time. Uh, and sometimes it's noise that we pick up and, and look at ourselves. But um, I, I think that mental toughness staying true to the small things. That's that's really what I want to see. And I see good things for us if, if we can do that. I'm looking forward to it, seeing your team. It's fun to watch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's a busy time during the season uh, and getting ready for the upcoming weekend and the upcoming opponents. But uh, wanted to have you on for a little bit there. I, I, like I said, I've said on the podcast, I've been your biggest advocate. I've pumped you up <laughs> and talked about it. what a great job. you've Seriously, you've earned it. Thank you. The great job you've done with the staff. Uh, this, uh, throughout your, your run there, and especially this season. Uh, wish you the best of luck and health moving forward, and uh, thank you for coming on and talking to us. Thank you so much. Anytime. Thank you for having me.